Welcome to the McGemmon class scanning and navigation training module. My name is Ava and the UN Space Feeds AI voice assistant. In this module we will review the correct procedure for identifying targets of interest and then navigating the ship to the desired location. Welcome to the bridge. This is the ship's nerve center where you have command and control over any ship system. Right now we're interested in the science station so make your way over to that console and take a seat. This bridge station is responsible for scanning space around the ship and then highlighting any targets of scientific interest for the command staff. You'll notice that the sensor's UI has four distinct modes, with each mode corresponding to one of the ship's physical sensor arrays. Let's begin by taking a look at the Galactic Position mode, which ties into the X-ray Pulsar-based Navigation and Timing Array, or XNAV for short. This array tracks the location and timing of known pulsars to accurately derive the ship's position relative to the galactic core. We can also reference that same catalogue of known stellar objects to obtain a high-level overview of each galactic sector. The default sector target always aligns with our ship's current local sector. However, by using the controls below, we can actually target any sector of space, anywhere in the galaxy, or even beyond. Go ahead and press the Target Select button to switch from our local sector to a manually targeted one. You'll notice that the sector information has now updated to reflect the change of sector target. While this is only a high level overview of a given sector, the data can still be useful when deciding where to explore next. And then finally, we have some simple display controls for refining your view of the galactic map. Have a go at targeting a few different sectors yourself, and then press the long range button when you're ready to continue. The long range mode employs the ship's Spacetime Curvature Mass Inferencer, or SCMI array for short. As the name suggests, the SCMI array infers the location and mass of celestial objects by detecting localized changes in the curvature of spacetime. While operating in passive mode, the array detects the largest sources of space-time curvature within a 50 light-year radius of the target location. Typically, these will be star systems, but the array is also capable of detecting much smaller objects within a few light-years, such as rogue planets. And as with the XNAV array, the default target location is the ship's current galactic coordinates. This will update automatically and refresh the target list as you travel across the galaxy but you can toggle that behavior on and off using the Auto Refresh button. And again, we can also manually target any sector of space in an effort to find distant targets of interest. Just be aware that the SCNL array has a maximum active range of 2,000 light years, beyond which it can only resolve the most massive of objects. And on the subject of active scans, let's take a more detailed look at a nearby star system. Go ahead and select the Alpha Cherry system, our closest stellar neighbor. A basic overview of that system is generated on the right-hand side, and the displayed information will expand over time as more detailed scans are performed. Now go ahead and click the Align to Target button to focus the SCMI array on this specific location in space. We are now presented with a more detailed view of the targeted location. However, you'll notice that it's only showing the passively acquired data. Let's fill in the blanks by performing a long-range survey. Initiating the SCMI long array survey. is now actively scaling the target location for point-like increases in the curvature of spacetime. By employing Einstein's field equations, the system can derive the amount of mass required to cause the observed increase in curvature. Then, once the mass is known, we can determine roughly what parts of object... Okay, long -range there we survey go. Complete. We now have a much more accurate picture of this star system. Go ahead and select any of the objects in the target list. You'll find that we now have more detailed information available to us on the right-hand UI panel. You will also notice that the data is present to distinct knowledge levels, and with our long-range survey, we have unlocked knowledge level 1. This is also indicated on each target entry by way of a single green pip. The goal here is to find rocky worlds within a star's habitable zone, which is our primary target of scientific interest. We can then navigate the ship to that location in order to perform more detailed scans, ultimately increasing our knowledge level for any given object. Typically, we'd perform numerous surveys on many different star systems before plotting a course, 
but for now let's pick a target in this system. Go ahead and select any planet that appeals to you from the list, and then select the Send to Helm button. This makes the planet's coordinates available to the Helm station, so let's head over and take a look at that console now. We will begin by taking a quick look at the various screens available to the Helm. The left-hand display is dedicated to navigation, and shows both the ship's current galactic position along with its target destination coordinates. The central display deals with the flight controls themselves, including the FTL system, sublight engines and the reaction control thrusters. The right-hand screen features the autopilot controls, toggles with a 3D target indicators and the ship's navigation lights. OK, let's retrieve the target information from the sensors by pressing the Use Sensor Target your target coordinate should now be displayed in this box, which represents your current nav target. The galactic coordinates represent the target's position in the galaxy to the nearest whole light year. The coordinates are relative to the center of our galaxy, the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star. The local coordinates represent the target's position within a star system. The coordinates are relative to the system's centre of gravity, which is usually a star, or the Berry Centre in multi-star systems. While it is possible to fly the ship manually to any location in the galaxy, let's engage the autopilot for now so that I can take care of that for you. The ship will now automatically turn to face the current nav target, but you will need to manually engage the FTL system in order for us to get underway. You may now engage the FTL system while the autopunt is engaged, I will manage the ship's speed and final approach to the tiny coordinates, so just sit back and enjoy the ride. The FTL system works by compressing space ahead of the ship, and then expanding it behind, creating a bubble of warp to space with the ship occupying a region of flat space-time at its center. The FTL field massively amplifies the ship's current velocity by a factor of the field strength, along the direction of the field's forward vector. This means the FTL field does not physically move the ship, it is dead relies on the thrust provided by the ship's sublight engines. The maximum speed of the ship is therefore a combination of the FTL field strength and the thrust output of the sublight engines. For the McGemon class, this is approximately 300 light years per hour. Even so, the Milky Way is a vast and mysterious place, and even at our top speed it will still take over two full weeks to fly from one side of the galaxy to the other. It looks like we're not far from our destination now, so enjoy the view while I handle the final approach. OK, here we are. You are now looking at an entirely new world, bathed in the light of another star. At this distance, our home is now just another point of light in the vast darkness of space. Does life exist here? What new things can we discover on this world? These are the questions that this ship was designed to answer. Let's head back to the sensor station, and we'll see if we can answer some of those questions now. With our ship having arrived at our target star system, we can now employ the medium-range sensors to broaden our general knowledge of this location. The medium-range sensors employ multiple modules that are combined into a single array, known as the Multiband Interferometric Spectrometer, or MBIS for short. This array has the resolution to perform detailed scans of any object larger than a few dozen kilometers, with its range covering an entire star system. Operationally, we perform a medium-range survey as a matter of course when entering any new star system. This elevates us to knowledge level 2 for all objects in range. Let's do that now. Go Just as with the long-range survey, the EMBIS array works outward from the central star, targeting each detective object in turn. It uses a combination of interferometry and spectroscopy to determine the precise nature and class of all system objects, including their atmospheric composition. OK, let's wait for... There we go. You'll notice that we are now showing two green pips on each of the objects in this system. And on the right-hand side, you'll find that we have now generated the Knowledge Level 2 data. At this point, we've performed enough analysis to determine the true nature of each planet, and more importantly, whether or not we've discovered an Earth analogue. But what about life, or signs of civilization, past or present? For that, we're going to need a short-range scan. Go ahead and switch to the... Sh the short-range sensors employ the Synthetic Aperture Terahertz Imaging Radar, or the Satya Ramay for short. 
This device builds a high-resolution, voxelized tomographic image of its target and then performs detailed spectral analysis on each individual data point. With this technology, we can determine the presence of life, identify artificial structures, and even conduct metallurgical analysis. Let's perform a scan of this planet now and see what details we can reveal. Begin by highlighting the planet in the target listing. And now initiate the short... Great, you'll notice that we have now generated knowledge level 3 data for this planet, which covers all of its surface details. Any given star system is considered to be fully explored once all of its planets are scanned to knowledge level 3. OK, let's take a look at those surface details. From here, we can enable or disable various data overlays depending on our current area of scientific interest. The first overlay is fairly self-explanatory. It simply displays the planet's cloud layers. The next overlay shows the planet's lit and unlit regions. This button highlights any tech signatures on the planet's surface, be that current or historical technology. And then we have life signatures, which can be anything from simple bacteria to complex life forms. You are now armed with the knowledge and skill required to head out into the unknown depths of our galaxy to conduct scientific research and discover its mysteries. This ship and her crew are tasked with exploring distant worlds, seeking out new life in all of its diversity, and making peaceful first contact with any intelligent species that we might encounter along the way. This concludes the scanning and navigation training module. You are free to continue exploring if you wish, but please be aware that your progress will not be saved. Thank you and goodbye.